This is testing post beach bend. Um, we're still on the tight converter. It appears to be fine. It's making uh, 19 pounds of boost at 3100 RPM, which is about right. We've moved nitrous out a lot. Um, we've made a bar change. We've made a spring change in the rear. We've repaired our parachute. And the axle. We've repaired the axle. Um, what other changes? Other just tune up stuff. Basically, we're just going to go see if we can get it to go 60 feet. See what it is. If it's fast, then we'll go farther. If it's slow, then we'll figure out how to make it fast. Um, I don't really want to go farther than 60 feet. Um, to this point, a lot of our testing has been figuring out power management with the MoTeC. I feel like we have a fairly good grasp on that as far as down track, putting power in. Uh, we've not been the 155 or 56 or anything crazy like Justin's truck has, but we also don't have a turbo 400. We're missing a lot of pieces of that puzzle. We've been 143. My goal is 145. I think at 145, if we can get the front half back how it used to be when we used to race the truck a year and a half ago, two years ago, whatever it was, um, it should go 490s. Like, it should do it somewhat consistently, in my opinion. This converter being tight, I really think is gonna be good. I just have to make it leave. Once I make it leave, it's a good bit more efficient than the old one. Um, and that's kind of the problem with 48s is that we need a loose converter to spool the turbo, but we need a tight converter to be efficient down the track before lockup. We're commanding lockup at uh, 1.3 and it happens at 1.6. For the first 1.6 seconds, we're not spinning our wheels, eh, pun intended, literally. Um, but we're, we're kind of wasting energy, you know, instead of being 100% power to the tire, we're, you know, probably 60%. Like, I really think it's that inefficient. It's like a 60% efficiency. So the new converter being that five to 600 RPM tighter down track, I think is gonna help us not need lock up as early and go faster through the front half. Um, our fastest half track time was with a converter that was about this tight. Um, ever since then, our half-track time wasn't as good, but we made up for it by basically locking the converters here. So we're just here to test, see if we can get our 60 foot back. If we can get 60 foot back, we might go to half-track. If half-track looks good, I might get wild with it, go to the to the eighth. Um, we'll see. I just want to get the truck working again because it was working. We changed the converter, and now everything's gone. So that's where we're at. Hopefully we uh, made all the right changes, and we'll see what it does. Nothing, 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 and then it just came all in at once. That's not terrible. That's better. Dude, it was like, <laughs> dude, it was wild. Like in the video, it, in real life, it was like nothing, 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 and then all of it was there. Yeah. It was, uh. Did it leave flat? Oh, it did bounce a little bit. It had, just, it had one little bounce, and then yeah. it just went. Which, yeah. It could, it, it's possible that our shock is too tight. Because now we've got a heavier, so we still went 14 clicks. Yeah. Yeah. On compression, because I just didn't trust that the new coil was going to do anything. Well, why didn't it shift, or is that just because? Oh, I don't know. No, I didn't shift. I don't know why. That's honestly, do you know why it did that? Because it has a bunch of pressure in the tires, and I hit and it with nothing. No it didn't yeah. hit. Any, it didn't hit it at all. Second test pass of the day. We took out four clicks of compression. He moved lockout up and adjusted some shift points because it didn't make a shift last time. And I think that's about it. Um, and now we're just gonna, he was gonna let out at 60 feet. Paul's not very good at listening to himself, so I'm not really sure.
Okay, uh, well, previous pass, we lost a belt. I ran to the end of the track and grabbed it because we have to run two belts on our setup. And we had one more issue. Not sure how that happened, but that one apparently didn't get torqued enough. Torqued. And lots of ripums. There was a couple times that it had a lot of ripums in there. Okay, the we got we to find the bridge. Detective. Yeah, play find the bridge. Let's play find the bridge. <laughs> it's like whack-a-mole, but different. Uh, it's right there. I see it. Just uh, give me this. This. That's tight, at least. <laughs> Crazy. Not cool, I bet. Yep, that's a little bit toasty. There's rags right there. You know what's nice? There's no one else here. I know. Yeah. You can do whatever. testing when there are people here. Because everybody's like, oh, what happened? And they gotta come be nosy. Like, uh, well, we're stupid. That's what happened. We're human. We make errors. Not very often because I'm superhuman, but. If you could just come out of there, that'd be great. It's uh, probably pretty warm. If it looks straight and everything. It's not fucky. Yeah, I mean, it looks mostly fine. There's a couple little gouges where I'm sure we went for a hell of a ride. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, and I don't know for sure, but typically these are hard to get back underneath the other rock. Well, if it made its way out. Uh, we have a magnet if you need that. No, I'm saying that I need to take the other rocker loose so I can uh, fish this in. Like, torch. it's loose enough that... Torch. Loose enough that we're gonna be gonna grab that thing. Yep. That came loose, but it's tight enough that it still has lash. Oh, uh, you want to roll me over? <laughs> What's the lash? 120. <laughs> hey, what did you say earlier about 87,000? <laughs> They're on to us. They're listening. Right, oh. right there. Okay. If you put the mark right between we the two, we don't. Uh, we don't have our feeler gauges, so we'll be uh, checking lash off of. Gonna be something. Does it something fit on that's, the manifold? Uh, yeah, I could probably make that work, maybe. Hey, hey. Man manifold appears to be... Okay, that works. This is maybe the dumbest way I've ever checked off Is it, like, though, the dumbest? What are you, you going to do? What are you going to do? What even are you going to do, Mitchell? What do you do when you're stupid? Are you too good for your home? See, this is why you don't check valve flash this way. Because <laughs> it's stupid and not the right way. It'll work, but... Oh, other way. Okay. That's a little too much valve flash. Oh, we have 42. Oh, God, it went like two turns. <laughs> Shocker. It's perfect. Went a little on the loose. It's like side. 12? Well, usually what I do is turn it down, and then I also don't usually have an injector harness in my way. So I'm gonna be honest. Kind of retarded. Kind of retarded. What? She's got her freaking paws. Oh yeah. <laughs> that one is Remy, right? No, no that's I, this one is Zoe. Zoe, whatever it is. Zoe. Hold on, let me get the boy. Oh, you got both of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Both of them. Yeah, well, actually, when you're possum, mom, they gotta go with you everywhere you go. <laughs> <laughs> you don't get to leave your babies at home unattended. No problem. You know, you know, you're going to have that on some of those bigger jobs. Got that. We custom. also lost the belt on the first pass. <laughs> so we got one, though. It's hanging in there. I got. We got her back. Mitch Whoa. is towing in recovery. Got Sorry, it. Sorry, we temporarily misplaced it. Put that over with our pile of other stuff. Just a classic day at the, the park nice with the fam. When they come loose, the valve doesn't make contact. <laughs> Current situation, Kato 1, truck 1. <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> round 3. Yeah, yeah round, I guess it is technically a round 3 You're going to throw in a Mortal Kombat. He's going to hit me. Nope, we're good.
Yeah, yeah, it was I pretty. That. That, we went the wrong way on the shock. Yeah, it was pretty rough. It needs more tight, or I need to put an ass load of preload on those springs. Yeah. Because they're still not heavy enough. Yep. Um, like, it was bad enough I felt it. And then that converter being so efficient, it made the one two shift, and then it locked, and it was too much. Too oh, fast. yeah. No, yeah. It was. Like, I told. Real fast. <laughs> yeah, I told ever. I was like, either he turned on another kit. Or just was lock up. It just that was lock up, and it was all of it real fast. I yeah. also lost the other belt. I know because I bought a 14 volts charger. Yeah, she gone. Okay, well we'll stretch that other one back on there, and then we'll go find that. Yeah, other I'll one. go find it quick. Uh, I I brought it back. I'll pull the log, but it's shifted that time, so I. Picked it. Right over the top of it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it was a pretty bad bounce that time. Yeah, I know. Like, it almost double bounced. Yeah, well, I put power in. Yeah. It went faster than six foot. It was 136. I didn't. I mean, it's it's terrible. Yeah. It's a terrible 136. It's a 136, though. Yeah. Okay, we got to get a fan on the engine and one of the brakes. Yep. Yeah. All right. The well, sun has gone down. It is now actually really nice out. But we made some more shock adjustment changes and been talking with Logan Yelton and I don't know what his plan is after this but he can still test tomorrow too if need be. I think that trunnion's messed up. I can't see it very well. Uh, do you have a flashlight? Uh, it's hot. Yeah, I actually do. Hold on. Oh, this is the this brain. is the new it's one. Hot. I was like, oh. No, that's there? the new one. <laughs> so it keeps backing this out, and then it kicks the bridge. And the trunnion, and the trunnion is, really, is tight. Like really tight. So the only thing I can think is it's coming down, and it's being pushed back up. And then just that hammering is somehow backing it up because you saw me tighten it. Oh, yeah. It, it was, was more tight. than tight I enough. I said we swap out both. Just to be safe. But, uh, yeah. You got an exhaust. Does this one move freely? Yeah. I mean, it, it needs to be a little clean. Right. It needs to be cleaned up, but it cl it moves way better than the other one. Yeah. Lloyd paint out his exhaust too. Yeah. Grab it with the bare hands. Yeah. What are the odds? Oh God, no. I would, uh... That one moves good. We oh, should pull the, the see it. Oh, that is still uh, yeah. warm. Yeah, I was calm. I'd like to know, I was calm. I didn't get mad. However, when they told me to drive back, I was already like, I'm done. I'm not, we're not fixing this engine. No. Mostly because I was frustrated. I'm like, this doesn't make sense. I was blew the tires off at 1.8 seconds. It's still slow to the 60 foot. It's the rowdiest sounding. The one culprit. Point... Yeah, and honestly, this <laughs> one. You're wild. All right, then. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, we're Blow gonna... on it. I'll, put, I'll do like the Grinch and throw it in my mouth. Are the threads like messed up or anything? No. Cause I mean that thing was tight. It's very bridge. tight. Bridge. Find bridge. Yep. It looks good. I mean it's it's a bridge. It's a bridge. Really they're pretty. You kind of expect to be a little bit beat up when it gets thrown off at 6,500 RPM. 
All right, test pass number four or five. I lost track. We made some pretty aggressive uh, bar angle changes, so we're not really sure what to expect. Hopefully better than before. Something else to learn from. We've all got our hopes pretty high, but we know how that usually goes, so. Oh, she's pissed. That belt is just pissed. I love it. it them belts are coming off. <laughs> those belts are so pissed off. Man, I love those belts. <laughs> You got one. one you got one. Nothing. <laughs> All right. So it bounced its ass off, but it went 133. Okay. So you guys saw our testing session at I-57. This is on Tuesday. Um, Rocky Top is coming up this weekend. So just to kind of recap it. The first four passes were with a bar angle that I have not run in a long time. Like since we foot braked the truck and like we're going 140, 60 foot. Um, so basically what was happening was we'd leave and so the the bounce issue is completely separate to this necessarily but we would leave um, the truck would start to get wheel speed and then because of the anti-squat we had in the truck we would just continue to get wheel speed to the point that it was un unmanageable but generally speaking slicks want wheel speed for whatever reason four-wheel drive trucks don't like a lot of wheel speed the first four passes we struggled i just kept moving everything out nitrous out shifts out it just didn't matter what we did we'd get about 1.4 seconds in the pass, I'd lose the tire. 60 foots were still terrible because we were trying to get power in early because we knew it needed to be there, but we just flat out couldn't do it. The fifth pass, we went back to very close to what we had. Um, what we originally ran was 122% anti-squat at like 68 inches. The four passes that did not work, we went 105% anti-squat at 72 inches. And then the last pass, I went to 120% anti-squat at like 74 inches. So the longer your instant center is, the slower your move is, whether it's, um, you know, the truck squatting a whole lot or trying to plant the tire like a radial would. Either way, the further you get away from the rear end or your instant center length gets longer, the slower that move is. So the goal was to try to slow the truck down on the hit and then drive into what we wanted. Well, we learned quickly that the 105% didn't work. The 120% seemed to work pretty good, but we still had a bounce. What we ended up deciding needed to happen was we got to have a lot more power on the hit. Based on the information we had from testing, we know that more anti-squat helped with keeping the tire planted. So I made the decision to come back and put a good bit more anti-squat in it. And then after conversations with several people, we kind of came to the conclusion that the 29 and a half with a soft sidewall, just a just your standard bias ply, uh, non-stiff sidewall, we just did not have enough control of the sidewall to do anything with it. Um, so we figure we're just gonna go back to the small tires, which is what we used to run. Uh, we didn't have a bounce and we did our best 60 foot ever and our best pass ever on small tires. So. We went ahead and I ordered both sets. Um, they'll be here before the race. Um, I got a set of Mickey Thompson uh, 3055S's, which are a 28105 non W stiff sidewall. And then I did a set of Hoosier 28105 uh, non W stiff sidewalls. Um, I'll probably put the Mickey Thompson's on it because that's what we ran. That's what our personal best is on. That's what our best 60 foot was on. Um, and then again, like I said, we're going to go up in anti squat. So instead of being 120%, I'm gonna go pretty close to 130%, and then I'm gonna keep it that 75 inches or so. Um, Shock-wise, we made a bunch of shock changes. None of them fixed the bounce. And if I'm being honest, I don't know if any of them made it significantly worse. It, we just, with a softer shock, we moved the bounce, what appeared to be more in the chassis. With a stiffer, uh, stiffer shock setting, 
we moved the bounce to the tire. So we decided we were gonna leave the shock kind of soft because I'd rather the shock and the chassis move, but the tire stay planted than the chassis not move near as much, but the tire load and unload. Um, and then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start throwing some power in sooner. We had a pretty good delay. It was like a half second delay on the first kit and it wasn't ramped all the way on until like one second. So we're just gonna keep moving it in until we either lose the tire or the truck flies. So um, that's where we're at. Hope you guys enjoy this video. I'm enjoying our struggles with some little engine problems that um, I believe we resolved at this point. And yeah, you guys are gonna enjoy the next video just as much as you enjoy this one. So we'll see you next time. Thank you.